guys, we've got a big show for you today. We're talking Thunder schedule. We have some news about Patrick Patterson. We're going to look at the Thunder's projected win totals for next season. And we're going to profile Josh Schustis. Whoa! <laughs> Come on in! Hey guys, welcome to uh, another edition of what I know about the Oklahoma City Thunder, but you do not. My name is Tyler, your host, aka Sir Knows a Lot, and we got a big show today, so let's get right to uh, Let's get right. <laughs> let's get at it. Let's get started. First of all, I feel excitement that part of the Thunder schedule has been released. Now only three games, but it's enough to to you know whet the appetite and think you know the season will be here before you know it. The Thunder will open up the season at home versus the New York Knicks on October 19th. So that'll be our first regular season opportunity to, the opportunity to get to see Paul George and Patrick Patterson and Westbrook again and just what this team will be like this season. This will be our first taste of that and who out of breath. Fortunately, it's against the Knicks who aren't any good. They probably won't have Carmelo. Maybe he'll be playing with the Thunder. Who knows? But that's the first game. So October 19th, that's... Uh, Two months of what? Two months and eight days away. So that's pretty exciting. We also learned that on December 7th, the Thunder will be playing in Mexico City against the new um, the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets. It'll be a home game for Brooklyn, and uh, Oklahoma City will be the away team. But they'll be playing in Mexico City, which that uh, interesting venue to play in. Then on Christmas Day, the or actually it's Christmas night, the Thunder will play the Houston Rockets. So they'll get to see Chris Paul and James Harden, and again, maybe Carmelo's playing for the Rockets now because he still really wants to play there. Um, maybe, maybe the Thunder, doubtful, but uh, a greater possibility of the Rockets. So that's three games to kind of whet our appetite, like I said, to get us excited. I'm, I'm ready. The whole schedule will release next week, uh, hopefully in time for next week's episode, um, so we can really dive into it and get even more excited. Also, uh, news of note, um, Patrick Patterson had knee surgery this week, uh, arthroscopic knee surgery. Um, he'll be out four to six weeks. Uh, and I guess in re you know, I didn't watch any of the Raptors last year, uh, except when they played here, um, when the Thunder played them. So I didn't really pay any attention to Patrick Patterson. I, I knew who he was, but not a lot about him. We'll profile him later uh, this summer. But uh, evidently he played with some discomfort, and he just did not look like the same player the second half of the year. So I'm glad they're getting the surgery out of the way now. Hopefully it will help him, and he'll be able to be 100% by training camp, which starts September 26th. And that six-week period will be right about then. So hopefully he'll be raring, ready to go by, by that point in time, and ready to spend a full training camp with the Thunder uh, as the team tries to mesh. Also, this actually happened a week ago, and I was going to include it in last week's episode, and I just forgot. But ESPN released their projections for the upcoming season in terms of how many wins each team will have and, and how they will finish. Uh, and for terms of the Western Conference, Conference, they picked the Thunder to win 49 and a half games. So somewhere they're going to win half a game. And they picked them to finish fifth. Mm, I don't agree with that at all. Adding Paul George and only winning two more games and finishing fifth, I don't know. They, they picked the Warriors to be one. I can understand that. Two, um, I forget right now, it was either Houston or San Antonio was two, and the other one was three. So those two, you know, Houston, they should be better with Chris Paul, but they offense was so great with Harden run, running the point, switch it up to Chris Paul, maybe it throws everything off, you know. It's unclear right now. And then the Spurs, they got Kawhi Leonard, but and Ginobili's back, but Parker's getting old, Lamarcus Aldridge is getting old, so I can see them slipping, and I think Thunder could finish above them. And the, But the team that really, is, I don't agree with at all, they picked the Minnesota Timberwolves to finish fourth. And yes, I know they got Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's a good player, but come on. He's not going to jump the, they had them winning 51 games or something. They're not going to be better than Thunder. There's no way. I think at worst, the Thunder will be fourth. And if everything really goes well, I see them being uh, second. Lee Jenkins of Sports Illustrated, who I talked about last week, has actually picked them to be second. So, you know, getting closer to the season, we'll have a more in-depth preview uh, and how many wins I think they'll, they'll get and where they'll finish uh, 
for the season in the Western Conference, but, but I, they won't finish fifth, unless it's just a disaster. And no way behind the Timberwolves. Um, so that was the main news this week. Uh, so that gets us to our Thunder Profile Player of the Week, and it is Josh Hustis. Now, if you're like me, it feels like Josh Hustis has played for the Thunder for at least a decade. He hasn't. He was actually drafted by the Thunder in 2014 out of Stanford. Uh, he went to school in Stanford for four years, averaged about seven points, seven rebounds, a couple of assists, uh, shot about 39% from three. He was a, a very good defender. He finished on the, the all Pac-12, 10, 9, whatever their name is nowadays. He finished on their all defensive team list. Uh, I think for sure his last two seasons, but his calling card was defense, and that was one of the main reasons the Thunder drafted him, was to be that type of 3 and D player. The guy that'll camp out in the corners or on the wings and catch the three, or catch the ball, you know, when Westbrook drives the lane, space the floor, and to hit, knock down those threes, and then play good, solid defense. Well, he really hasn't had much of a chance to do that. He played, he's played for the Blue for, uh, for one full season, and part of the other seasons as well. He signed with the Thunder in 2015 and has been on their 15, 16, and the 16, 17 season. So he's played two full seasons with the Thunder, but only appeared in a handful of games. But most of his time still spent back with the Blue. He's played the Summer League each year, including this past summer. And you know, what kind of a player is he? Like I said, a 3 and D style player. Um, good, good defense. He's had some good block shots uh, in his Thunder appearances as well as for the blue. He's knocked down a fair percentage of his threes, um, but he hasn't seemed to really exploded in a way that would give him a real good shot at the rotation. I think he deserves a shot. We see a guy like Kyle Singler, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, actually next week, we'll talk about Singler. But, you know, Singler keeps getting some chances, not so much lately, but Houston doesn't seem to me to have a really good, sh has not gotten a really good shot at cracking the rotation. Because I think when he's played, just from the eye test, just watching without all the advanced stats, stats and everything, it seems like he's played pretty well. And I'd like to see him get 12 minutes a game, just for a stretch, to see what he could do. To see if he could be a player that could really go out there and help them, both uh, behind the three-point line and defensively. So the projection for Houston this year, Again, he probably won't get a lot of playing time again. He'll probably spend a lot of time with the blue. Um, you know, who knows what'll happen. Maybe he'll get a shot and maybe he'll take advantage of it. We saw guys like Jeremy Lamb and P uh, uh, Perry Jones get, get shots and, and, you know, just never really panned out. And that's why they're not here. So if he doesn't really get a good shot this year and really get some meaningful minutes, I, I hope for his sake, because he seems like a real nice guy, seems like a real smart guy, I hope he is able to be moved to a team where he can uh, play more. So that's Josh Hustis. That's our Thunder Profile Player of the Week. Uh, follow him on, it, on uh, Twitter. <laughs> it's Jay Hustis. He posts some interesting stuff and writes some interesting articles for his blog. So he seems like a real smart guy. Um, went to Stanford. going to be pretty smart to go there. And uh, So check him out. Uh, that's our Thunder Profile Player of the Week. And as I mentioned, next week we will talk about Kyle Singler, a player a lot of guys, a lot of you guys love to hate, and a lot of subject of people wanting to trade him and all that sort of stuff. And I got a cool story about him and my daughter that we'll talk about next week. But that's all the time we have for today. Um, good, have a good Saturday, because this is dropping on Saturday, and have a great week. Please subscribe uh, to this channel so you can view all these videos because there'll be more Thunder videos each week till the season and then we'll start game recaps. Uh, hit the like button, share it with others, and uh, next to the subscribe button hit that bell to get notifications. Because again, we have a video dropping every Saturday, but if some big news breaks, like if Westbrook finally signs the extension, there'll probably be a video dropping early, and I don't want you guys to miss it. So hit that uh, bell to get notifications. And uh, again, thank you guys for watching. You know, next week we can talk about the full schedule, and it's just, uh, you know, we're getting closer and closer. You know, just a little over a month and a half from training camp. So, <sighs> it's a long, long summer, long off season. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great week, and as always, you know what to do. Thunder up. Subscribe. Like. Comment.